Good morning guys and welcome back to Barham Engines. So, spent the first half hour this morning guys tying up some paperwork. As you see my, um, my desk is nice and clean already. Also, just been making the for sale sign for the fire blade. Everything's for sale. If any of you guys are interested, I can maybe do you a little bit of a deal. It's one of those really where if it sells, it sells. If not, I'm quite happy to keep it. You know, the nice weather's coming up. I should probably have a little ride on it to Ilford Coombe this evening. But there it is, guys. It's an absolute beautiful bike. Um, and for that sort of money, to be honest, I think it's one of the best shapes. And um, yeah, have many miles of fun on that in the summer. Right, so today, I had our little rant in yesterday's video, but we've got a couple of jobs here, all Cosworth orientated again. I do apologize, but this is the block that we've just bored for the liners. As you can see there, I've deburred them on the inside. I'm gonna give that a good clean off now. And um, we're gonna press those liners in, then bore it out to standard. Got some standard pistons arrived yesterday and I'm gonna stick the pockets in those once I know, once I get the deck height right. The two cosy blocks over here, so the Escort and the Sapphire blocks for the same customer. We've got the mains ARP bolts and the big end bolts there. We've got the crank bearings in and all nice and clean. And we're gonna stick the crank in there, torque it up. We're gonna put the pistons on the rods loosely and just do a dummy build to get the correct jut out on the pistons. And then we've got the crank over there, which goes with that block, which we put in the liners in. That's the one that's been knife edged years ago by whoever else. Um, so we're gonna set that up on there and just see how far out it is on the, um, on the balance. It'd be quite interesting to see. And then we're gonna um, obviously balance that balance the front pulley, and then we've got the lovely Turbo Sport clutch and flywheel. So we're gonna see how far that is out. So pushing the first one in, the Heath Robinson setup again. So we've got the hollow tube at the top. chamfer on the inside edge of this flange here just so it doesn't scrape down on the block and remove material and get trapped under here and give you a sort of false false bottom out okay that's all it takes Is, but it's always a relief when I've got the liners in these blocks. I think it's because not that I've got no confidence in doing it, but it's just there's quite a lot of money if you bugger it up. <laughs> there we go, I can breathe now. Right, so I'm gonna get this set up on the get it set up on the boring bar and pour it out the standard. Right, so why that boring bar's chugging away now, boring those liners out, we're just gonna stick the crank in the Sapphire Cosworth block. So first of all, first steps we take, we put the, the oil jets in loosely, um, just so when we can dummy up the pistons, we can sort of see where we want those oil jets. One thing we, we really must make sure of, and if you guys are, you know, a lot of you guys are gonna say, yeah, well, yeah we know that, mate, but, as you'd be surprised how many phone calls we've had in the past where people say, look, I've done these, um, these mains up and the crank's locked solid. So when you put new mains in, do make sure that behind the shell and the housing is dry of oil. You wouldn't believe the amount of people we've had in the past that oil the back of the bearing as well as the front, they put it in and wonder why it locks solid. So do make sure that that is dry. Um, obviously everything is 
blown out, checked and double checked. So what we're going to do, we've got the crank here all nice and clean. We're going to stick the rear main seal on the back and then pop the crank in. As you can see, we've put the ARP main studs in. Now it does say on the instructions, you just nip those up sort of hand tight, which we've done. And then we've got to torque the caps up once the crank's in three stages to 90 foot pound. So that's what we're going to do. So we've just turned this block over. I'm just going to put the long studs in. So this sapphire is the one with the six long studs. As you can see, the back two studs there sit lower than the front two. And the reason for that is these are the ones that we do five mil deeper because they've got the lugs that they drill and tap into that sort of the casting of the lug sort of protrudes the base of the water jacket. So we go five mil deeper on those. These two here, you see, we haven't got um, a counter ball for the, for the seal. Um, and the reason for that is because that hole there does not go into the water jacket. So there's no need for the seal on those. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some grease on these and put the seals in flush with the block on those four. Um, we've nipped them up hand tight and they're ready then to put the head on. See those seals are sitting in there lovely now. Just proud of flush so the gasket can clamp down and that's lovely. Right guys so I've been a busy boy today. This is the sapphire block with six long studs. Got the crank in and there is the escort block. So we've got the 10 long studs in the base, in the base there. And just got the ARP main studs in and just pop the crank in. And see we've got the PTFE rear main seal. This is the new uprated one, which do funnily enough work quite well on these. Um, but I just thought I'd quickly show you. We've got the, the rear main housing. So this is the rear main um, bearing cap. So, so what we normally do, this is the one that goes over the seal. So we basically, with these PTFE seals, it's a bit different to the rubber seals. You've got to make sure the, the crank is very dry and so is the seal and you put it in dry. So you, we basically put it in, put it on the end of the crank, uh, make sure it's flush with the end of the block. And then the cap, we put a very thin layer of silicon just on the outside so it seals. Obviously make sure the seal housing there is bone dry. And then that goes on like that. So we'll tighten that up and that will pull down nicely and the silicon will just sort of seal the gap in there. And the same on this one will do. There we go. Cranks in, torqued up. Turn absolutely lovely. And they're ready to get the pistons in and just align those oil jets. Although we are still waiting for one oil jet. It's missing, I think they were slightly out of stock. So we've got another four oil jets coming for the block that's just been bored there with the liners. So I think there's another five oil jets on their way. So. Let's go over and see um, how to balance that crank is, shall we? Right, so here's the knife edge crank, guys. We're going to fire up this machine now. So, power on. Let's just get it rolling. Start it up. So we make sure it's on the right-hand side, which is this side, obviously. Turn the lock off. So it's now free floating. And the amount is 30. And that's at 32. 320 degrees on the angle. So if we stop this, go to 32 on the angle. And it's at that awkward bloody plane. I hate it when it's at that plane. It's not so bad if it's here because you can remove material, but what we're gonna to have to do here is 
probably remove a little bit of material here and then that will probably bring it round to needing to take some off here. So we're just gonna take a little bit off the edge there and uh, see how we get on. So what we've done, so we've got it down to zero and the angle gauge is flapping all over the shot which means it can't sense where it's out. So if I stop it I'll show you exactly what I've done. What I did was remove material off here, I drilled a couple of little holes in there, a little bit off there and that's brought that back into true. So what we'll do is we'll spin up the other end now and see how far that one's out. So you can see the other end is out about 50 and at 220 degrees. So uh, because that's quite a lot, we've got 220 there and then we've got, it's out on this plane here, which is a good plane. So what we'll do is we're gonna drill a nice hole in there and see if we can bring that down. So as you can see, we've got it down to 10 at 200 on the angle. And that is because I've just drilled one big hole right in the middle there. So what we're gonna do is just drill a little one next to it and that should be all right. Right, we've got that down to nearly zero now on the left hand side. So what I normally do when it was miles out, like that was, I normally go back to the right hand side when the left hand side's nearly there. And you can see now that's gone up to just past 10 at about 70 on the angle. So we're just gonna rectify this end and then go back. This is what you have to do sometimes. The right hand again, as you can see, we're down to zero. The gauge is flapping about. So that's pretty good. Do the left hand side. You can see that by doing the right hand side, that's brought the left hand side down to zero now. So yeah, happy with that, that's all good. Now, unfortunately, I didn't realize, but we're still waiting for the mains, the, uh, the flywheel bolts on this. So we're not gonna be able to get this set, um, done until the next video. But um, yeah, at least the crank is, is all good now. Well, thanks ever so much for watching, guys. Hit the subscribe button, comment down below. See you in another one. Cheers.